Hello everyone, I'm excited to share with you a great CTF challenge, Bulldog version 2. It's full of web hacking techniques and more, so let's get started. So this is a boot to root, meaning that you only have remote access to a host name, in this case uh, ctf16.rootme.org. This, this is a challenge hosted on rootme and um, I'm going to, first of all, try to enumerate what is running on this machine. You know, you can't really attack something if you don't know anything about it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, cd into my ctfs folder and into bulldog2 and here I'm going to perform a port scan. I'm using the open option as well as the verbose mode in order to get things running quickly and the top ports I'm just interested in the most famous 100 ports. If I don't find anything or if I hit a roadblock, then I might enlarge my scope and target more ports. So right away, as you can see, it didn't take much time. We have port 80 and port 22. So I'm going to start with port 80. Hopefully it's a web service. So I'm going to go to ctf16.rootme.org and hit enter. And we land on bulldog.social, the fan, the fun social network, with a image of a sad bulldog here. Okay, so what do we have in this page? The only company I trust with my social media. Hmm. They truly set the bar for their competitors. Da -da -da -da. And we have a sign up feature and a list of users. Also have an about us. Uh, page. Let's open it in a new tab. I'm going to also open sign up in a new tab. Part of um, application mapping is to visit all the links available to you and using the website just like a normal user. If I go to Twitter uh, link it doesn't point to anything and same thing for Instagram. We also have in the top right corner the same links, I guess. We have login, let's open it in a new tab, and register, which points to slash register, and it's the same uh, button we've clicked on before, which is right here. All right, uh, let's go visit each page at a time. We have the about page. Um, Thank you for taking time to visit our humble website, blah, blah, blah. When we started out three years ago, we were, um, we had a great run. As you can imagine, we have a specialist in a niche market and you skyrocket. We could not keep up with the demand and time when incidents occurred. Yes, uh, well, the company was hacked. If you remember from a previous challenge, Bulldog, if you haven't checked it out, it's a really cool challenge where you get to learn many techniques. I encourage you to look into the penetration testing playlist. There you'll find the challenge. I'm going also to link it in the description box so that you guys can watch it. So first we were made aware of a significant data breach and yes, blah, blah, blah. We currently have over 1500 bullies users and they have and have partners of which we sell data to. Hilarious. Our pledge to you is that we will always maintain the highest level of security and privacy. Yeah, the empty promises of big corporations. No offense. Fool us once, shame on you. Fool us twice, shame on you. Haha. <laughs> okay, let's see if uh, we can fool you twice. Uh, before I move to the next page, I'm just going to see in the HTML content if I have anything interesting. Um, we have some links to assets, about, um, nothing really interesting here. So let's move on. What about the next page? The register page says here, unfortunately, we are not accepting registrations at this time due to security concerns. If needed, please reach out to a customer support representative to create a commercial account. Mm, so there might be a commercial account there. We just need to find it, maybe. What else do we have? It's seen page three, where we have the list of users. Oh, okay. Uh, let's click on one of these, like this one right here. It points to slash profile slash, um, I guess the username, SF Fabian. And here we have the username, the email. Ooh, okay. Generally, these are 
private data, but it seems that bulldog.social doesn't care. I'm curious to see if we can use that email to perform something, but we'll see. Let's move on to the next page. So here we have the login with the username and password. Okay, well, we have the list of uh, usernames because we have some users right here and we might attempt to perform some kind of light uh, password spraying or password brute force. Let's see, do we have anything else? Nope. Okay, I also noticed that there is an icon here which is typical for Angular, it's a front-end framework. Whenever I encounter it, I like to do an inspection and see what we have in the JavaScript files. So if we go to Sources on Chrome, uh, you'll find all the JavaScript files right here. And uh, we can go ahead and directly go to main. This is generally where the entire front end logic is hosted. And uh, we can uh, look for some resources like uh, slash profile. Because remember, we had this uh, URL right here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one slash profile and then the username. I suspect that we have something in the JavaScript that has this endpoint. So we have this uh, slash profile, but we can keep going and we might find something. Yeah, so here we have um, a get request to slash users slash profile. So I can go and look for HTTP dot uh, get and this will hopefully return all the endpoints that are used by the front end. Um, notice that we have here slash users slash profile. Um, we only had slash profile here. So I think that this is a new endpoint. So slash users slash profile. Yeah, it gives us 404 because in the JavaScript file, we have a concatenation with the variable L, which I guess is the username part. Anyways, let's get uh, going. So we have uh, slash users slash get users where limit equals um, something. I suspect that this is a number. Um, and these are generally um, requests sent to the back end. So the front end requests uh, some data to the back end and the back end responds with an answer. I am using burp to collect all the um, calls. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of calls to the back end. So we have slash users profile. And then as we've guessed uh, the username and we have the response in a JSON uh, object from the back end with the data about this user. Notice that we have more data here. Name, this is the full name, and we have also authentication level and rend. I wonder what these are. In the front end, just takes those two values, the username and the email. So this is one of the problems with backends that do not restrict information returned, and this might give us information disclosure. Um, I'm looking for the request that returns the users, yeah this one right here, get users where limit equals and then uh, there's a limit right here. So if we count the users, it's returning nine elements from the database. I'm going to send it to the repeater. And uh, let's see if we change this to one, would I get just one user? Yep, I get one user. What about two? Same thing, I get two users. And it seems that they are the same. So if I remove the limit altogether, what would I receive? Send, it's taking a bit of time. Oh, whoa, what the hell? We were able to just retrieve all the users from the database. Hmm, okay, that's, uh, that's interesting. And everything is formatted in JSON. So what I can do is just take that URL and I'm going to get that file. Let's rename the get users file to users.txt, actually users.json. So you can use JQ or I also like to use grun to parse that file. So I'm going to do grun and then users.json. And as you can see, I have all the uh, elements right here. So what I can do is parse that by 
I'm gripping for the username and then I'm going to cut based on the double quote and take the second yeah the second element and I'm going to put everything well I'm going to sort that and put it into a file called usernames.txt what I want to do here is take those usernames and one by one fetch the data related to each user using this endpoint right here, slash profile and then the username. If I send this to the repeater, as you can see, uh, no, not that one, but slash users slash profile. Yeah, as you can see, I have uh, authentication level. So I'm going after an admin user if there is an admin user. I'm also going to target those usernames in a brute force attack. So here I'm going to use admin as well in password, send it, and I have incorrect login here. So the idea is to use the same username as the password or just use something like uh, admin123 or password123, something like that, or a password spray attack. So these are uh, two exercises you can do on your own. I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. It's really simple, just use the intruder. If you don't have Burp Professional, then Community Edition's intruder is throttled, it's a pain. So I suggest that you can you automate this in a script. For me, I'm going to explore other ways, such as looking at the register feature. I'm going to look for post data. As you can see, I have post endpoint pointing to slash users slash register, and I have slash users authenticate, post to slash users link authenticate. So this is maybe another uh, way to authenticate. If I look for the register keyword, you can see we have a validate register function in the back in the front end, which is looking for the name, the email, the username, and the password. So let's use that in a request. I'm going to go back to Burp. So instead of uh, sending a request to post users authenticate. I'm going to send it to register and just to verify if there is an endpoint, we get 200 saying here failed to register user. Okay, so it seems that there there's a logic behind that is verifying or validating our request. So we are looking for a username field. Let's just add an O at the end. It doesn't work. So we need to add an email, if you recall, from the JavaScript logic and let's uh, add a dummy email here password and i guess we had another info we needed to provide so the email the name the username and the password so username email password and name please subscribe seriously go ahead pause the video and subscribe to the channel send and we have a bad request saying here, unexpected string in JSON. Yeah, that's because I'm not using commas here. And let's send it. Oh, success. User registered. Good. So it seems that we've kind of bypassed the front end limitation saying that, hey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, unfortunately, we're not accepting registrations due to security concerns. And you need to contact a support representative. But let's uh, verify if we indeed uh, have created our user. So the username is admino. And the password, uh, where is it? Yeah, password123. Dot. Not the best password out there. Never use that kind of passwords in production or in your accounts. And we are logged in. Perfect. All right. In the next video, we're going to continue exploring the application, looking for other ways to pivot and escalate our privileges through other web vulnerabilities. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to receive the video once it goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.